If you have an RX 9070 and you're not undervolting it, you're missing out on quite a bit of performance and efficiency gains. Now, overclocking for these cars is completely dead. And what you should do instead is go ahead and get the right undervolt in. That's going to give you more performance, lower temperature, lower power consumption, reduce your coil wind, and even fix the annoying VRAM issue that some of these cars have. So with that said, Welcome back at Modern PSUs, and here we have a quick tutorial to show you guys how to do it. Now, little disclaimer, I'm using this Astro card. It looks very pretty. I have a full review on the channel, but this video is going to work on every single RX 9070. If you have an XT model, the settings vary a little bit. So I have a dedicated video for the XT. This one is only for the non-XT version. Now, we're going to do everything in the included software from the MD driver, so you don't need any extra software and we're gonna have a few different presets so first of all i'm gonna show you guys the universal preset which if you want to just copy without thinking too much you can do and then i'm gonna show you how to make it better for yourself now with that said the only thing i ask you guys is after you've seen the video if the video actually helps you if you can drop a like and subscribe you'd help me out a lot and uh, with that said let's start tweaking okay so here we are in windows now the first thing you want to do is open up the windows key and open up Adrenaline software. Now you have just type ADR and it's gonna pop up. And now you wanna go into the performance tab and into the tuning tab. You then wanna go all the way down until you find your actual GPU, as you can see, RX 9070, and you wanna click on custom. Accept that you're signing away everything and uh, let's actually go ahead and start. Now the first setting you wanna check is this one. So click on GPU tuning, enable it, and our voltage offset is actually what's going to save us. So if you want to just copy my settings, what you want to do is go here and do minus 70 right there. Now, this is going to work for most cars, OK? You then want to go ahead over there and enable power tuning. And here, you want to put minus 10, just like that. And this is actually our undervolt already finished. So if you want to just decrease your temperature a little bit, mostly, and also get a slight FPS boost, especially in the 1% low, you can just copy this. However, there's also VRAM. So we can enable VRAM tuning, and we can give our VRAM a little overclock, which is going to result in us getting some free performance at the cost of a little higher temperature. So only do this if you want performance, OK? So you want to go over here, and first of all, you want to enable fast timing. This is going to give you also a little bit of a latency boost. And then you want to go over here and set it to 2650 right there. And this is our first preset done. So how do we apply it and how do we change it? So you want to click on apply changes here on top and then you want to click on export profile. Now you want to go on desktop, name your undervolt profile somehow, for example undervolt, and save it. Now, in case you lose your settings and you want to restore it, you can just go in Import, choose your profile on Desktop, load it, open it, proceed, and it's going to restore it so you can never lose it. In case you want to remove your Undervolt, you can click here and do Reset, as you can see. Now, the one I gave you is just a basic profile that's going to work for most cars. But if you're willing to spend the time and do some testing, you can get a lot more than this. Because the 9070, out of all the GPUs I tried so far, is the one with the most variance. Now, what does that mean? It means that some cars are really bad and some cars are really good. So I've actually had some cars which are really unlucky. And the main profile is going to work for 99% of cars. If you're in the 1% unlucky, the worst card I've had, I could do minus 50 here. OK, now the higher this number, the better. OK, so minus 50 is if you're just super unlucky, unless you have a nearly broken card, then maybe minus 40. But like, really, I've never had a card that doesn't work with minus 50. So this is like the worst case scenario. The best case scenario is if you're very lucky, I've had one card that was able to do 140. Now, 140 is like Silicon Lottery winner. And uh, I think on average, a very good sample is able to do minus 100. Uh, stable in every game I'm talking. So this is it. Now, for the VRAM, actually, here also there's a big variance. But the best I've gotten was 2850. This number also, the higher it is, the better. So if you want to test it out, just go as high as you can for performance. Also, I've had one card 
which was able to do around 2800, which is a very good overclock, but only if I disabled fast timings. So in some cards, fast timing is also not going to work at high frequencies, and you want to test which one you prefer. In general, I prefer fast timings with a bit lower frequency compared to a higher frequency without fast timings, because it gives you less latency if you have this one enabled. So this is it. And now let's go and talk about the most misunderstood setting. So the power limit actually is what changes everything. And it's also why overclocking is not really a thing anymore, because if you set your perfect undervolt and your perfect overclock on the VRAM, by changing this slider, you can change completely how your card works. So if you go all the way to the left and do, for example, minus 30, you are going to dramatically reduce your power consumption. I am talking more than 100 watt reduction and dramatically reduce your temperature as well if you do this. And this is actually something you should do if you're playing, for example, with limited FPS or if you're playing uh, in a not so demanding game. On the other side, if you want the maximum performance, you can even go positive. And if you go plus 10, your card is going to run pretty high in temperature. It's going to be a bit louder for sure, but you're going to get the most possible performance ever. So after you've done all this, of course, you want to apply your changes and save your profile as I showed before. But this is the undervolting guide over. So with that said, if the video was helpful, please drop a like and subscribe. And I want you guys to drop a comment by saying what's your undervolt in the end so other people can also read it and compare. And with that said, I hope to see you guys again in another video and I wish you a very good day. Bye bye.